Hello everyone, welcome back. Tom with Capo Fetish. I just got done reading this book uh, a few days ago called Never a Dull Moment, 1971, The Year That Rock Exploded by David Hepworth. Really, really great book, great read. If you've never read it, check it out. Uh, just talks about all the iconic albums and cultural changes that were happening in this era. Really great stuff. Uh, I think it's still available. But anyway, today we're going to talk about some unsung albums from 1971. Albums that don't really, are not really talked about on a regular basis when you talk about albums from 71. Albums that need a little more love, a little more attention. I'm going to start off here with uh, Gene Clark's album, also known as White Light. My version just says Gene Clark. It doesn't say White Light on it. I think this is an original, original pressing. Anyway, a great singer-songwriter album. One of his best, in my opinion. It has just a plethora of great songs. Uh, the Virgin, With Tomorrow, the title track, White Light, Because of You, Once in a Hundred, Spanish Guitar, and I think my favorite song in here is Where My Love Lies Asleep. Great melody on that, just great melody. He also does a, a really great version of Tears of Rage by Richard Manuel and Bob Dylan. But yeah, just a solid record by Gene Clark. Uh, one that I don't hear a lot of people talking about. I always hear them talk about no other, but I think this one is the bomb. So Gene Clark's White Light from 71. How about the Second Faces album, Long Player? This is a fantastic record from start to finish. Starts off with Bad and Ruin, great rocker. Uh, has one of their greatest, greatest um, ballads, Sweet Lady Mary, with some just heartfelt vocals by Rod Stewart. Great, great slide guitar playing by Ron Wood. Just five minutes of just pure ear candy. Um, you also have uh, Richmond by uh, Ronnie Lane, great track. You also have a live version of Maybe I'm Amazed that they do from McCartney. Really, really cool, really different, more bluesy sounding. Side 2 starts off with Had Me A Real Good Time, one of their best rockers. This is the full version on this particular album. Then you have uh, a, another live version, an eight or nine minute version of this song, I Feel So Good, with a lot of audience participation. It really shows off Rod Stewart's charisma on stage at this point in his career. Has the uh, audience just worked up. Great, great tune. Then it ends with a traditional tune called Jerusalem, which a lot of people have covered. Even ELP did a cover, a really cool cover of it on Brain Salad Surgery. But on here, it's just Ron Wood playing acoustic guitar with his beautiful slide guitar playing. So great varied album by The Faces. I don't think they ever put out a bad album. I mean, they had four albums, but this is another just gem in their discography. Long Player from The Faces. Another great singer-songwriter album from 71 is Songs of Love and Hate by Leonard Cohen. This is one of my top three Leonard Cohen albums. Starts off with a really cool song called Avalanche uh, with his... Uh, his trademark kind of nylon guitar, uh, what would you say, um, kind of flamenco playing, really, really intense, really, really great lyrics. And then uh, you've got um, one of his most beautiful ballads, famous Blue Raincoat. Uh, you have a live song recorded at the, Lyle, at the Isle of Wight Festival in 1970 called uh, Sing, a, Sing Another Song, Boys. Uh, another great song is Dress Rehearsal Rag. Then it ends with one of his greatest songs, Joan of Arc. And then there's another track I have to mention on Side One that Inside One, he sounds completely wasted and drunk. And they kept the take, unless he was just kind of doing this as a joke. But there's a live version of this song called Diamonds in the Mine on uh, the same Isle of Wight show. But on this on the record, his voice is as ragged, and which is what's really carrying the song are the backup singers, these these two female backup singers. But just another great track, really great album, Songs of Love and Hate by Leonard Cohen. How about some blues from 1971, although it was recorded in 1970? B.B. Uh, King, Live in Cook County Jail. Great live blues album here. I, I think it was recorded in like September of 1970, but not released till early 71. Great live renditions of uh, Sweet Sixteen, which is on a lot of, lot of compilation albums of his. This particular version, this live version, uh, you have um, The Thrill Is Gone. It's another great live version of that classic. Uh, worry, 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 uh, Now Blue. How Blue Can You Get? It's just really good stuff. Really good stuff. Great live album from 1971. B.B. King, Live at Cook County Jail. 
How about a little jazz rock with some kind of singer-songwriter flourishes in here? Uh, a Better Land from Brian Auger and the Oblivion Express. Now, most Brian Auger albums are full of instrumental pieces. Uh, they don't have uh, a lot of like song-oriented type music like this album. I think he was going for maybe more of a commercial appeal on this album, and it really works. It didn't get any airplay, but man, as a listen, it is a solid from start to finish. It starts off with this song, uh, Dawn of Another Day which is just beautiful. And I got to tell you, one thing about this album, along with his, his famous Hammond B3 playing and the rest of the Oblivion Express, you have these really cool double-tracked vocals with this heavy reverb. Some songs have kind of um, kind of a, a harmony, too, with the double-track vocal. And I think what gives it this, this weight are these tracks, these vocal tracks. It's just amazing. All the tracks are really memorable and catchy. The arrangement's really tasteful. Um, there's a couple songs on here that could have gotten airplay. One called Tomorrow's City, just fantastic. Another one called Fill Your Head With Laughter. But the whole album is just filled with gems from start to finish. I would give this album a five star. Five star rating. Very, very underrated. Fantastic album. A Better Land by Brian Auger and the Oblivion Express. Now, you might say this is not really unsung, but when you look at best of lists, you know, top 100 this, top 50 this from that year, or best albums of all time, you don't really see a lot of Elton John albums, surprisingly. You might see Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, maybe, or Captain Fantastic, but you don't really see anyone talk about this album a whole lot, even though it spawned a couple of huge songs. Madman Across the Water, I think, is one of his greatest early albums. Not only does it have Tiny Dancer on it and, and the single Leave On, which are fantastic, you got Razor Face, the title track, Mad Man Across the Water, is such an intense song. Great vocals by Elton. Side 2 has a lot of great gems. Uh, Indian Sunset, what an intense tune. Just great stuff. Holiday Inn is a great little poppy number. Uh, you got Rotten Peaches, All the Nasties, and it ends with Goodbye. I think this is a really underrated Elton John album, along with Tumbleweed Connection. I think those two albums are just solid albums. So Mad Men Across the Water from Elton John from 1971. How about the third album from the James Gang, Thirds? An album that really doesn't get talked about quite a bit. Has the uh, popular song Walk Away. Great song, but one of the greatest James Gang songs, in my opinion, is the song called uh, Midnight Man. I don't know who the, who the lady is singing backup vocals. It's beautiful. It's such a great song. And his, like, um, his, his completely unique playing, his um, slide guitar on this particular track is just, oh, it's just an incredible track. Midnight Man. Let me get my glasses real quick here. I mentioned a few others. Uh, there's a second track, kind of more on the instrumental side, called You Dig. Oh, you Dig. That's really cool. Um, Dreaming in the Country. It's all the same. Another really great song on here called Again. Yeah, to me, and this, with along with uh, James Gang Rides Again, are just fantastic albums. So, James Gang Thirds, another great one. Another great one from Miss Laura Nero, Gonna Take a Miracle. Oh my God, what a great album this is. This is all cover songs, but she has the band LaBelle backing her up. LaBelle, uh, famously uh, known for the song Lady Marmalade from 1974. They're backing her up in 1971 here with some amazing backup vocals. Here they are in the back. There's Patti LaBelle and the whole group right there. But she does songs like, um, she, she completely reworks these songs and just makes them her own. She does uh, I Met Him on a Sunday, Monkey Time, Dancing in the Street, one of the best versions I've ever heard. You Really Got a Hold on Me, an incredible version. There's a track on here that'll bring tears to your eyes called Wind forgot who wrote it but it's just gorgeous um she does an amazing version of jimmy mack and spanish harlem and then of course the title track gonna take a miracle this is an incredible incredible laura nero record i was just listening to it this morning just timeless timeless stuff that voice gorgeous the arrangements perfect perfect record gonna take a miracle by laura nero now we, the first three Jimi Hendrix albums are all five star albums. They're you know they're they're all they all deserve the acclaim they get, but it, the posthumous Cry of Love doesn't get a whole lot of love, and I think it's a great great album. It's been released as a lot of different titles since First Days of the Rising Sun. I think it was released as, which is good. Add in more tracks, but there's some fantastic songs on here. It starts off with Freedom, 
great, great bluesy driving rocker. Uh, Drifting is a great ballad. Great ballad. Of course, when it comes to ballads, it has one of his greatest ballads, Angel, which even uh, Rod Stewart covered on Never a Dull Moment. Um, Easy Rider is one of his greatest just driving rock and roll tracks. you got Astro Man, In From The Window, Belly Button Window. This is a really, really great record. It just kind of shows you this guy could have done anything going into the future. So Cry of Love from Jimi Hendrix, obviously recorded in 1970, not released till 1971. Now, there is a documentary coming out. Today is what, April 2nd, I believe? There is a documentary I've been waiting to come out now for about a year, and I finally found out online it's being released on April 12th, and it's going to be released in selected theaters, and it's about this amazing artist who only put out two albums. She was the first artist ever signed to Asylum Records by David Geffen. Amazing genius, Judy Sill. I've mentioned this album several times on this channel, but I can't stop mentioning it because it's such an amazing debut. Um, I only heard this album maybe about three, four years ago for the first time, and I was absolutely blown away by the melodies, the songwriting, the arrangements of all which she does. She's an arranger, everything, producer, songwriter. She does it all. A very tragic figure, had a very tragic life, but made the most beautiful music. Every track on this album is an absolute masterpiece. Crayon Angels, The Phantom Cowboy, uh, The Lamb ran, ran Away With The Crown. The Lamb Ran Away With The Crown is such an incredible song. You've got Lady O, which even the Turtles covered before she got signed to Asylum. And then you've got Jesus Was A Crossmaker, which was supposed to be a hit single. It should have been a hit single. It was produced by Graham Nash, but never really went anywhere. But you know, it could, you could have heard this on, on the radio, you know? The second side is just as good. You've got Ridge Rider, uh, My Man on Love, Loping Around the Cosmos, um, Enchanted Sky Machines, Abracadabra. This is what you call a masterpiece of a record. And I can't wait to see the uh, documentary on Judy Sill because all her contemporaries at the time are talking in the film. Jackson Brown, uh, J.D. Souther, um, who else do you have? You even have David Geffen talk. David Geffen talking about her, how he signed her, and uh, this is all in the uh, the trailer, mind you. And uh, also has Linda Ronsant talking about her. So David Crosby. So anyway, I can't wait to see the documentary. It's called uh, Lost Angel. To see, so see you know, and it's being released on I believe Apple on uh, April twelfth, and then I think April fifteenth at selected theaters. So this is Judy Sill's debut album. And the doc is coming out next week. Great stuff. Um, also, another great album, too, is the first one by Crazy Horse, Neil Young's backup band. Um, they do uh, a great Neil Young song on here called Dance, Dance, Dance. You've got Danny Witten on here before his life fell apart, unfortunately. Um, you've got a song called Downtown, which was made famous on Neil Young's Tonight's the Night called Come on, baby, let's go downtown. Recorded live at the Fillmore East in 70. Uh, a lot of great originals on here, like uh, Look at All the Things, I Don't Want to Talk About It, uh, Dirty, Dirty, Nobody. Just a real, great, real, raw rock album from Crazy Horse on Reprise. I always, I was always a huge fan of Crazy Horse. I just love how loose they are. I love that raw sound they put out. And this is a great, great debut album. Crazy Horse. And then last but not least... An incredible songwriter from Britain who um, never really made it here, but uh, some of his albums are just some of the greatest from this era. Uh, John Martin, the album Bless the Weather. Oh my God, what a great album this is. Very short album too. Starts off with Go Easy. Incredible song. Bless the Weather, Walk on the Water, Just Now, Head and Heart, which I think America did on their, um, was it Homecoming record? And then uh, there's a song called Back Down the River. Oh my God, what a great song. Check this, check this guy out, John Martin. This album, and he has another album called Solid Air, which is just a five-star album. Then it ends with a really cool version of Singing in the Rain, like a little minute, one minute ditty. Yeah, so this is great. It's called Bless the Weather by John Martin. And those are just some uh, unsung albums from uh, 1971 I wanted to present to you today. Thank you all for watching. Please press subscribe and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.